We're looking at Steven Universe Ongoing number 13 today, and shockingly enough, the cover on this one is actually, like, kind of appropriate to the story being told. <laughs> Which, again, doesn't really matter. The covers for these are obviously just art pieces meant to catch your attention, which is fine. But, like, I, I've always said, at the very least, they could try to include art pieces that at least feature the characters that are featured in the comic. And this time they do. This is a Lapis, Peridot, and, and Steven story, technically speaking, even though Garnet features in it a bit and Peridot isn't in part of the story. And it even, in a small way, features water, I guess, technically, too. So, like, pretty appropriate cover, all things considered. And I just, I found that more amusing than I should have, so I wanted to point it out. In this one, Peridot has been trying to get Lapis to spend time with her, coming up with activities for them to do together, but Lapis keeps blowing her off and eventually blows up at her, saying that she should be asking first, rather than assuming that they're going to do things together. And basically saying you should be communicating when Lapis isn't communicating with her, why she's being standoffish and spending so much time by herself. So Steven, as an outsider with an outsider's perspective, after coming into this situation just in time to hear their big argument, goes off to talk to Lapis on Peridot's behalf, and learns that Lapis is suffering from anxiety about the future that's causing her to feel depressed. Like, neither of those words are actually used here, anxiety, depressed, they aren't used here, but it's clear that that's what's happening. And Steven, of course, being the kind of person who wants to help his friends through their problems, tries to come up with a way to help Lapis deal with this, so he tries to distract her by taking her out for a day of fun at Funland, and this is where we get that little bit of involvement from Water, because she plays one of those water shooty games and wins a prize. But then the prize, the little pink whale from Rose's room, which is appropriate because we just talked about that episode recently on Revisiverse. Um, it, it starts to fall on Steven, and then Garnet's there, and she catches it. And then she moves on with her day, mentions Future Vision, and moves on with her day. And Lapis had mentioned Future Vision earlier. She's not a sapphire, so she can't see what's going to happen. People need to tell her things, right? But Lapis and Steven move on as well. They eventually end up on the Ferris wheel. They keep talking while they're on the Ferris wheel. And Lapis just can't allow herself to live in the moment. And then she tries to fly away. She says, I need to escape from this. And Steven goes after her and falls. And it's once again Garnet who's there to save him. And Lapis has a little bit of a brief back and forth with Garnet. And it's clear that she's envious of Garnet's ability to see the future, because she feels like that must mean that Garnet never worries about anything, until Garnet explains that she can still only just see possibilities, and because what happens in the moment affects those possibilities, she understands better than most people that what we do right now does make a difference, that it is important, that all you can do is use your best judgment going forward and appreciate what's happening now, which makes a lot of sense, because what Lapis is saying about the, the Earth being so impermanent, and humanity being so impermanent, and all of her relationships being so impermanent, and never knowing when something horrible might happen to just erase those things forever, it, it seems like the logical thing for her to do would be to spend as much time as possible with the people she cares about, in the places that she likes. It, rather than running away from them. <laughs> but I know from personal experience that feelings like that just can't be logic to weigh. All you can do is try to find a foothold from which to start to heal past them. And so what Lapis has actually been trying to do, she's not been spending time with herself, hoping that she can come to terms with these feelings, she's been trying to escape. She's been trying to escape from the people she cares about most, so that she'll stop thinking about how much she cares about them and hopefully she won't feel so anxious about their safety. She just hasn't been able to articulate that to herself. But Garnet reminding her that the present matters even more than the future, because it's in the present that we make the choices that, sh that shape that future, that gets Lapis on the path towards feeling better. She starts to understand that she shouldn't have been blowing off her friends. She goes home, she talks to Peridot, and they say that they're both going to work together to be more what the other needs. And it was a cool open ending that made it clear that Lapis isn't just 
magically over this, but she has a path forward. And I like that a lot. In a lot of ways, this is the heaviest of the ongoing issues that I've read through so far. In fact, it's heavy enough that, assuming that I remember, I'm going to try to remember to make a note. I might forget, though. Um, but I'll, I'll get to it eventually, uh, relatively soon. I think this is probably when I'm going to branch off and do one of the other Steven Universe comics. I'm going to take a break from this series, maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks, or, you know, for a review or two, because I haven't actually been doing these weekly recently, have I? Uh, you get what I mean, though. I think this is a good temporary stopping point, which makes it a good place to branch off and talk about one of those other Steven Universe comic stories that aren't part of this series. Um, that said, partially because this one is so heavy, because it takes itself so seriously, I like this one a lot. I think it gives just enough weight to this subject for a story of this length for this audience. My only real issue with it, and I, I want to be clear, I don't want to, I would, I don't want to come off like I'm insulting the artist here, because I'm not. Like I'm, I'm sure I can't remember what her name was now, but I, I did check to see if I recognized her name from anything. I didn't. Um, I'm sure she's a perfectly nice person, and her heart's fine, but there, it just. There, there was something about it that felt off, and I was looking back through it, and I realized, while her Steven looks fine, and her Lapis looks fine, there's just a couple angles where they feel a little wonky, which is true of any time you're trying to translate something that usually moves into something still. Her Peridot just looks wrong. She doesn't seem to really understand how to draw Peridot's face well, and all of her characters feel a little bit like they were put through Willy Wonka's taffy puller. And that's, that's just not a good look on Peridot. Peridot is supposed to look small and stumpy. She doesn't. She looks lanky here. And I just... I didn't like it. It's definitely not the worst. I could imagine worse Steven Universe art. I've seen worse Steven Universe art. Just bouncing around online, technically. But it did take me out of the story a couple times. And the story is still really good. So, like, I can get past it for the most part. But it is something to mention. It's fine, but it could definitely be better. Oh, that said, though, guys, if you have read the 13th issue of Steven Universe Ongoing, what did you think of it? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else who you think would enjoy my content, subscribe. If you haven't, you can also check out links to my various social medias, as well as the many ways you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.